Hello, welcome to my kitchen where I'm going to show a quick demonstration about quantum tunneling and evanescent waves using light. So what I have here is a nice block of perspex. Um, and let me just turn the light off here, wait for the camera to adjust. So I'm going to shine a laser into the block. I found that uh, red is probably the most effective for showing this. So if I shine the laser at a nice steep angle like this, uh, I get a spot coming through on the back. You can see over here, here's a nice spot, and you can even see the beam going through and you can see some of it reflecting. So there's some probability for reflection, some probability for transmission. If I uh, increase the angle of incidence like this, eventually, there we go, I get a total internal reflection. So there's now no beam coming through at all. The probability of transmission is zero. There's a bit of ambient light coming from around the sides here, but just to show you, here's what happens when a full beam goes through. Can you see that? So there's much bigger, and here's where it's disappeared again. There, it's disappeared. It's totally internal reflection there. Okay. So when we're getting total internal reflection, the probability for transmission, the uh, probability current density on the other side, um, is zero. But there's nevertheless an amplitude to detect a photon out the back there. Um, so what we could do in order to show that is uh, remember in the quantum problem, uh, if we have the infinitely long um, barrier, then we won't uh, get any probability current density in that region. Uh, but if we can make the barrier finite length by coupling to some measurement device, uh, we can actually get a probability current in that other region. So what I'd like to show you is I'd like to take this prism right here, and I'd like to place it behind the block over here and have the uh, leave a little air gap and have the uh, prism coupled to the evanescent wave out the back of the perspex block and, and take some of the reflected power away and divert it and make a transmitted wave. Now that's not going to happen. So here's, uh, there's the beam going through, here's total internal reflection, and here's me placing the prism here, and it doesn't steal any of the reflected power. Um, it's not because uh, quantum mechanics is wrong, it's just because the wavelength of this laser is 650 nanometers. So um, it, in order to couple to that exponentially dying evanescent wave, I'd need to get within a few um, wavelengths of the light. And 650 nanometers is somewhere between a 20th and a 200th of the width of a hair. Uh, so I'm not going to realistically get this prism close enough to the block in order to couple to it. Uh, to take any significant power away. I can do a bit of a cheat though, which is that I need to find a material uh, or some kind of surface that I can get close enough to the back of this perspex block that I can couple the evanescent wave inside on, on off the back. Um, and the trick is that I can just uh, pour some water in there, because of course water is going to be, um, let's set up the total internal reflection, uh, the water is going to get close enough to the back there, right? That's a bit of a cheat. Oopsie daisy. Let's get that back there. Hopefully when it settles down. I think we need a little bit more water just to bring the height up. There we go, we're getting a beam through now. And it's rotating again. There we go. So now you can see on the back wall we're getting that beam through. Can you see that? There we go. So the reason it's a little bit of a cheat is just that uh, you know, what I'm really doing is just changing the refractive index of the material out the back of the perspex block. But that kind of explains why this had to work, right? Because um, you know that uh, if I put a higher refractive index material out the back, like water, I will change the critical angle and get a beam to go through. But how, if all the individual photons were reflecting before, how would they know to go through if you change the stuff behind the perspex block? And the answer is that there's actually uh, a probability, uh, sorry, uh, an amplitude for transmission. But since I'm using water here, let me just turn this light on. And, and so, sorry, and, and the reason the light is so good for showing this is, as we said before, that um, light is, it can be thought of either as quantum or classical. The Maxwell's equations uh, are compatible with quantum mechanics. So you can either think of this as uh, a beam of light, um, in a classical manner, or you can think of that beam of light as being made up of individual quanta of energy, 
called photons uh, and and those descriptions will be compatible with each other. So you can think of this as an evanescent wave for classical light, or you can think of it as quantum tunneling of the photons through the uh, classically forbidden region, as it were. Okay, so uh, since I've got the cup of water here, let me just adjust the focus on the camera. There we go. So there's actually uh, a, an even better demonstration that you can do with water. You can see down here that we have total internal reflection in the cup. You can't see the tip of my finger, right? Here you can see it, and down here you can't because there's total internal reflection. If I just get it a tiny bit damp, um, and I place my finger on the back here, you see my fingerprint come about. See that? That's quite clear, isn't it? So what's happening is that the, the ridges of my fingerprint are getting close enough to um, well, to the water and then the plastic, uh, that they can couple to that evanescent wave. So I should be getting total internal reflection, um, probability of reflection 100%. But by placing something close enough to the back, I can actually couple to the evanescent wave and I can steal some of that power away. So uh, some of the reflected power and I turned it into transmitted. And so then I get uh, a propagating wave out the back. But you can see how sensitive it is because uh, the troughs of my fingerprint are too far away to have any significant coupling. Hence, you see dark where, sorry, see so uh, light where the troughs are because I'm not coupling and you're getting total internal reflection. And you see dark where the, the peaks of my fingerprint are because uh, that is coupling to the evanescent wave and, and directing the power out. So I'm getting uh, quantum tunneling into my finger of these individual photons. So you can think of it with light either as a classical or a quantum effect. It doesn't make the quantum problem any less magical, it just means that uh, classical waves are more magical. Let's take a look uh, at some of that uh, magical idea uh, in, in a different room. In terms of a classical particle, however, it's really quite weird. Imagine we take a box like this, which contains two halves separated by a finite potential barrier. We take a classical particle, such as this marble, place it into one of the halves, and no matter how much shaking up we give it, we'll always find it in that same half. Imagine now it's a quantum particle, however, and when we give it the same shaking up, half the time we might expect to find it in the other half. Depending on whether the outside of the box counts as a finite barrier or not, I might even expect to find not in the box at all. 